Good afternoon. I am proud to be here at Frostburg. I'm glad to be with all of you, and I want to offer my welcome back to veteran faculty and to new faculty. I want to particularly welcome you to campus, in large part because that, not, that makes me not the newest guy on campus. So thank you for, uh, for being here. Let's see how this works. Face bar. There we go. So regional development and engagement. I find that as I speak to people throughout the community and on campus, very often what winds up happening is regional development is heard as economic development. And economic development is certainly a part of what my office will be doing, but it is not the only part of what we do and what we're going to be doing. And I find that in speaking this afternoon, I probably have the easiest role of all the vice presidents who are going to be presenting, mostly because they're all telling you about stuff that they have done and are reporting to you. I'm going to be talking to you about what I hope to do going forward. And so it's not until next year that you can throw things at me uh, to tell me that I, we didn't achieve or did achieve what, uh, what we hope to do. So let me, let me talk about what regional development and engagement includes beyond economic development. Economic development clearly includes partnerships with businesses and industry and economic development organizations with government and the like. But it also includes regional outreach and leadership in the community, in the arts and culture and humanities, social sciences and STEM. Frostburg State University needs to be even more engaged and create even more beneficial relationships with our community, with our local business and industry, with our local organizations, and with local, state, and federal governments. Because we can access resources and bring those resources to campus, to Western Maryland, and the broader region more effectively, I think, than we have done in the past. FSU, and most universities, in fact, really have kind of a limited basket of ways in which they can effectively be engaged with their communities. And it's no different here on this campus in terms of how we can engage with our community. First and foremost, we are the greatest repository of intellectual capital in the region, bar none. And so we need to do as good a job as we can possibly do in a very deliberate way to deploy that intellectual capital, whether that intellectual capital is in the STEM fields, is in arts or, or uh, uh, humanities or any other field, we need to do as good a job as we can possibly figure out how to do to deploy that intellectual capital out into the region for those people and those organizations that need the help. Because we are that help for the region. A university, and this university in particular, can and ought to serve as both a convener and an honest broker for those organizations and people in the community who are charged with particular kinds of endeavors, whether that endeavor is in economic development or whether that is in the arts, visual or performing arts, or whether that is in the, the STEM uh, uh, fields. Whatever it is, this university and leaders throughout this university can serve as the conveners of those groups of people charged with advancing the knowledge, advancing the, the progress of that field by bringing them together, by working together and planning and, and delivering on those plans, and by being what I refer to as the honest broker, the arbiter. Very often what you will find is that different people in the community, different organizations in the community all want good, positive things to happen, but they approach those endeavors in slightly different ways. It ought to be part of our job as a university to help navigate the community's role through those different options to pick which one or which ones make the most sense moving forward. And finally, in the third way that universities, and again, this university ought to uh, interact in the community, is as a catalyst for positive change. So again, not only serve as a convener and an honest broker, but actually serve as a catalyst to help develop innovative uh, new ideas, to help create new ways of doing things, uh, new products if we're working with business and industry. And all of these apply not just to economic development, but can apply to any endeavor in which we're involved. So how will we do these things? 
It's great to talk about the theory of the, the three ways that universities can be involved in, in the region and even within the walls of the university, but we need to get to more specific ways that we can do and, and act. And so what I like to refer to is the four vital eyes. And they all popped up at the same time. That's not the way it was on my screen. Uh, <laughs> but these are the four vital eyes, and you'll see a fifth one there, but it's information. Again, we are the repository of intellectual capital in the region. A large part of that is information and education that we ought to move out into the region to provide to those who need it, whether those who need it are individuals or businesses or organizations or local governments or whomever. We ought to be able to, to engage those people, those organizations, and provide them information that can be useful to them in the work that they do. We ought to be more deliberate about being the catalyst for innovation. Innovation can occur in any field, whether it's the arts or the sciences. But often what happens with innovation is innovation happens when different disciplines come together to look at a problem that has only been looked at by one discipline. And that spark of imagination that may come from someone in the arts to a scientific problem is what sparks that innovation. So we need to do, I think, a, a job of bringing together different disciplines in a very deliberate way, perhaps in specific space designed or set aside for innovation and creativity to help solve some of the issues that we face as a region. Again, those, re those issues could be issues faced by business and industry in the area, or they could be issues faced by governments or nonprofit organizations or individuals. But we need to do a better job, and I intend to, to help bring us together to focus on uh, innovation and creativity. But innovation is not enough in and of itself. So you get a great idea. You, that idea begins to germinate or hatch, if you will. But what do you do with it? You've got to incubate that idea. You've got to incubate that, that new thing that you've helped to create. And that creation can occur among faculty. It can occur with students. It can occur with partners in the community. But that incubation, again, may require a space, but it ought to be a deliberate way that we support as a university the ability to move information into innovations, move innovation and provide incubation for that, for that new idea, for that creativity, so that it can grow and mature and help serve the community in whatever field that, that service is required. And the fourth eye that is critical and missing in so many places across the country is once those new ideas grow up and germinate and become mature, allowing them to continue to succeed requires investment. That may be investment in our own faculty, providing incentives for faculty to continue to do that. That may be investment in that great new idea that came out of the innovation uh, uh, plan that we've got in the university that has developed a new business. Neither the university faculty member nor that bright new business that's been created can survive without investment. So I intend for us as a university to be at the center of bringing together opportunities for investment in those innovative new ideas that we have in, in, the, in the region and at this university. And lastly, the, the fifth I word is inclusion. None of this can be done in a silo. It must include all of us. It must include the full diversity of what we have at the university in order to make these things successful. And finally, how do we know if we're going to be successful? It's actually very simple. Um, we, we have to plan what we do very specifically and very transparently. And over the course of the next several weeks and months, I will be out with the faculty talking about ideas and, and more importantly soliciting your ideas about the kinds of things that we ought to do to accomplish those four I's that I just talked about to develop plans to move forward in each of those four eyes. And then we have to do it. That's largely my role as the new Vice President for Regional Development and Engagement. Not so much to actually do it, but to keep track and work with all of you and make sure that the commitments we have made 
as individuals, as departments, as organizations, as partners with, with our uh, region, that those people who have stepped up and said, I will do this, part of my function will be to make sure that we're all held accountable for doing what we said we're going to do. So you'll, you'll see some of that. But doing is not enough without measuring. So at the very start of the planning process, part of the conversations that we will have is to determine what are the measures that we're going to decide upon today to determine whether we're going to be successful in a year or five years or ten years with what we're embarking on. And so those measures are going to be critically important to determine what the true outcomes are of what we plan and what we do. And lastly, to close the loop, is to come back and report to you, report to our partners throughout the, the region what we have done and whether we've been successful and how we ought to change some things uh, with the newly acquired knowledge that we have in, in working together. I am excited about being here at Frostburg. I am excited about working with all of you. I recognize some familiar faces already and I hope next year that all of the faces in the audience will be familiar to me. Thank you very much.